The iodine test is a biochemical test to detect and distinguish certain polysaccharides such as starch, dextrin, and glycogen from monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides such as cellulose and chitin. A positive iodine test is reflected by the development of color which depends on the type of polysaccharide. Amylose gives blue-black color, amylopectin gives orange-yellow color, dextrin gives red color, while glycogen gives a reddish-brown color. The iodine starch test was first described by J.J. Collin and H.F. Gautier de Clobry in 1814 and independently by F. Stromeyer in 1815. The reagent used in the iodine test is a very diluted form of Lugol's iodine, also known as aqueous iodine. Lugol's iodine was first made in 1829 by the French physician Jean Lugol. It is an aqueous solution of elemental iodine and potassium iodide. Iodine on its own is insoluble in water. Addition of potassium iodide results in a reversible reaction of an iodide ion with iodine to form a triiodide ion, which further reacts with an iodine molecule to form a pentaiodide ion, and so on. Make sure to check out my short video on how to prepare iodine solution by clicking on the link given in the screen right now or the link in the description below. Polysaccharide molecules such as starch, dextrin and glycogen are comprised of a large number of alpha-D glucose units that are bound together by alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds or alpha-acetal linkages with occasional alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages that result in branched chains except in amylose. As a result of the bond angles in the alpha-acetal linkages, these molecules form branched or unbranched 3D spiral structures much like a coiled spring. Starts can be separated into two fractions, the linear chain amylose and the branched chain amylopectin. Natural starches are mixtures of amylose and amylopectin. Amylose forms a colloidal dispersion in hot water, whereas amylopectin is completely insoluble. Iodine test is based on the principle that polyiodide ions, mainly the triiodide ions present in iodine solution, forms colored adsorption complexes with the helical chains of glucose residues of certain polysaccharides. The triiodide and pentaiodide ions formed are linear and slip inside the helix structures which then produces visual colors upon contact with these polysaccharide molecules. The amylose component in starch is responsible for the formation of a deep blue or blue-black color in the presence of iodine, while amylopectin produces an orange-yellow hue. Dextrins form a red chromogen, while glycogen produces reddish-brown color upon contact with iodine. The amylose component of starch forms a very dark blue-black complex with iodine. The color is intense enough to be able to effectively mask the orange-yellow color formed by amylopectin. This is why starch in general appears to produce only blue-black color with iodine. The color of the starch complex is so deep that it can be detected visually even when the concentration of the iodine is as low as 20 micromolar at 20 degrees Celsius. Further, the resulting color depends on certain factors such as the length of the glucose chains, temperature, presence of water miscible organic compounds like ethanol, and pH. The color changes that occur are believed to be caused by so-called charge transfer complexes or CT complexes. After the polyiodide such as triiodide is inside of the polysaccharide helix such as amylose, a charge transfer complex is formed between the two. In this charge transfer complex, the helical amylose acts as a charge donor and the polyiodide as an acceptor. This transfer of charge between the two entities excites the electrons of the acceptor molecules, in this case the polyiodide. When the electrons from the acceptor molecule return to their ground state, they give off electromagnetic radiation that is in the UV visible spectrum. In the case of the amylose component in starch, this radiation corresponds to a deep blue color. It takes 40 glucose molecules to form a complex helix around a polyiodide molecule. The iodine test is also popularly used in plant physiology experiments as an indirect test to check if a plant is photosynthesizing. 
Starch is formed as reserve food material primarily in the leaves of plants during photosynthesis. The formation and presence of starch in such plants is confirmed or ruled out using the iodine test. Do check out my photosynthesis related experiment videos to know more about iodine test and photosynthesis. Click on the links given in the description below. In this video, we'll be demonstrating positive and negative iodine tests using a variety of test samples. To perform this experiment, we'll need the following. Test samples consisting of 1% glucose, 1% sucrose, 1% starch, cellulose sample in the form of a small ball of cotton, and distilled water as control sample. You may also consider any starchy food item such as a cut piece of potato, white bread, boiled rice, etc. 0.1 normal aqueous iodine solution or Lugol's iodine diluted about five times with distilled water. Four clean dry identical test tubes. Five graduated droppers or pipettes of one or two mil capacities. Test tube stand, test tube holder. To begin the test, Take the four labeled test tubes in the test tube stand. Using different droppers or pipettes, add 1 ml each of the test samples in the tubes. Also take 1 ml of distilled water in the fourth tube. This will be the negative control for our experiment. Also take the cellulose cotton sample. Now add a few drops each of the dilute iodine solution to each of the four tubes and also to the cellulose sample. Observe the change in color in the samples. You'll notice that the test tube containing the starch solution shows a rapid development of a deep blue-black color. All the other samples including the control test tube retain the original iodine color. Similarly, starchy foodstuffs like potato, bread, and boiled rice all give a blue-black coloration with iodine. This shows that iodine gives a color reaction only with certain polysaccharides, such as starch. Both starch and cellulose are polysaccharides. The main reason why starch shows a positive iodine test while cellulose does not is because, as explained previously at the start of this video, the alpha-D-glucose monomer units of starch are linked together by alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, which results in a 3D helical arrangement of the glucose units. The polyiodide ions can slip inside the helix and eventually produce visible color through the formation of charge transfer complexes. On the other hand, polysaccharides such as cellulose have their constituent beta-D-glucose units linked together by beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages, which gives rise to long, linear, straight chains of glucose units instead of a helix. So there is no room for polyiodide anions to slip into and form colored complexes. The result is that there is no significant chemical interaction between the iodine solution and the cellulose structures, hence a negative iodine test. So this is all about the iodine test for polysaccharides such as starch. Click on the end screen card shown on the screen right now along with the various links given in the description below to watch my other videos on iodine solution preparation protocol and also my other biochemical test videos. Thanks for watching.